students um i'm i'm afraid we've gone a little long on our um lessons this week so i wanted to make a video to show you um art literature and music so today i will analyze our objective is today i will analyze the music of the early 1800s so that i can identify hudson river school artists tra and transcendental literature and music of the time i'll know i have it when i can answer answer questions correctly. So there's a couple of star questions we're gonna answer correctly. Um, this is a Nearpod, but um, it's mostly so that my videos will work um, in the OLS or the new, new row. So um, you can just, um, well, there's an easy chocolate cake recipe for you. It's flourless and it was delicious. So anyway, there was that. So, um, okay, so here we go. So this week in OLS, you have a quiz that'll be due today. Quiz five, unit five, quiz two. Your TFAR will be tomorrow. Um, art, literature, and music is what you should do today. Um, warm up, what do you see in this painting? Just, I know you can't tell me, but um, notice, Notice what you don't see. Notice what you don't see. You don't see people, okay? You see the out of doors, you see the sky, you see um, the foliage on the trees, the leaves on the tree, a waterfall, okay? All right, so artists see changes. Two important movements during the 1800s, the Enlightenment movement, which the belief in human intelligence to resolve problems, and then the Industrial Revolution, science and technology will make the future better. Um, let's see, I think I lost the camera, sorry. All right, so music, we'll start with music. Music, the song you need to know is Battle Hymn of the Republic. It's written by Julia Ward Howe, and it becomes a rallying cry for Union soldiers during the Civil War. So they're going to hear this song and it's going to give them the the excitement, the the desire to continue fighting this war. So this is Julia Ward's, Ward Howe's Battle Hymn of the Republic. It is a um, like I said, um, a, the Civil War battle battle cry for Union soldiers. So uh, let's just take a little listen. It's a five minute long video. We're not, we're not doing that. Or maybe we are.
Okay, I think you get it. I do, I really do. All right, let's go. So um, artists, the Hudson River School, you need to know this, is a group of American landscape artists. They paint vast wilderness scenes. Humans have very small portion, part of the picture. If I could zoom in on this, I would, but I can't. Um, so if you look, what if you look at this picture, even though there's people in it, that's not the focal point of the picture. It's not a portrait. It's not a selfie of these people. It is portraits of the American West and how beautiful the landscape is and the mountains and the trees and the rivers and all those things. It's not about people. Notice there are no people in the picture. It is not the focal point of the picture. So these are Hudson River School artists. They are going to make art accessible to regular people. Look, there's animals, but not people. So they're gonna make art like a regular thing in somebody's home. It's affordable and it's beautiful and people are going to kind of romanticize the West because of the paintings that they see. Um, you see a person here and here, but they're not the focal point. The focal point is the water. Okay, so you get the idea of Hudson River School artists. Okay, so let's talk about, um, that's paint. we've done music, we've done art. Now let's talk about literature. So transcendentalism. Transcendentalism, there's two authors you need to know, Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson, okay? They're going to think that people can go beyond the physical world and that the spirit is more important than the uh than the physical world the spiritual world is more important than the physical world and so they're going to write things about nature and being present in that physical i mean in in, in the spiritual world um ralph waldo emerson like i said is here and he's a transcendental transcendentalist writer and leader and then you have henry david thoreau we'll talk more about henry david thoreau or we talked about henry david thoreau yesterday when we did the mexican-american war and then civil disobedience if you remember back to the boston tea party we talked about civil disobedience that is peacefully protesting a law you don't agree with okay or an unjust law so one example of this would be Rosa Parks refusing to give her seat up on the bus, give her up her seat on the bus to a white person. She's like, mm, I was here first. I'm not getting off. OK, so she peacefully protested a law or a, a cultural norm that she did not agree with. So that is civil disobedience. I'm trying to make this quick because this is ex this is you need to know this, but. All right, here's your exit ticket. So read the excerpt and answer the question that follows. Um, I'm just gonna trust you to answer it. The most sweet and tender, the most innocent and encouraging society may be found in any natural object, even for the most melancholy man. There can be no very black melancholy to him who lives in the midst of nature and has all of his senses still. While I enjoy the friendship of the seasons, I trust that nothing can make life a burden to me. Henry David Thoreau Walden, that's the name of the book, 1854. Which statement shows how the excerpt is an example of transcendentalism in the early to mid 1800s? I like to start at the bottom and work my way to the top because sometimes you get excited when you see that first one and you just go, hey. Okay, Thoreau focuses on the relationship between humans and the natural world. 
That could be, that sounds okay. Thoreau studies the relationship between nature and historical events. Hmm. Thoreau focuses on the role, role of science in changing the natural world. Hmm. Thoreau uses reason to explain natural events that happen in the world. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my text. And he's talking about the nature of man, um, the most interesting, the natural object, even for the most melancholy man. There can be no black melancholy to him who lives in the midst of nature and has his senses still. So that is the focus of the relationship between humans and the natural world. Okay, so the answer is J. All right, I know it's not historical events because he doesn't discuss any historical events here. I know it's not the role of science because he doesn't say anything about science. He enjoys the friendship of the seasons, but he trusts nothing can make life a burden to him. Okay, so there's no discussion of science and there's no natural events happening in the world. It's just him and what he's experiencing in nature. All right, that is your exit ticket. That is your um, quick art literature and music lesson.